Chapter 5 Peter, wake up! Peter, said a voice, a fist pounding on the door to Peter's bedroom. A low groan answered the voice. Peter, you all right? The door opened slightly and a pale Peter stood on the other side. Ugh, Peter, you look sick. Are you all right? Tinkerbell asked. Peter just groaned slightly. Have you thrown up at all today? She asked. My, my stomach tries to throw up, but all that comes up is spit. Peter replied, heading back to his bed and laying back down. Well, you stay in bed today. I'll give you some medicine that might help. You just need to lay back down. Tinkerbell's words only annoyed him. What? Ah, Tinkerbell can talk? What happened to the jingling bells? Maybe Peter understands her voice. Um, he's, or the author of this book understands her words at that. Yeah, but let's not judge it too harshly. All right. Tink, please don't talk to me like that. You make it sound like I'm a baby, Peter mumbled. Tinkerbell only chuckled. Just rest up, Peter. She tried an attempt to pet his hair, but was shooed away. Peter Pan, you don't hit me like that, Tink scolded. Peter just pulled his blanket over his head. I just did, he mumbled. Tinkerbell just remained quiet before fluttering to the door. Just get well soon and get over this bizarre attitude of yours. She pulled the door shut behind her. Peter waited up until he didn't hear any voices, which meant he was alone. He sat up, still a little sick, but his growling stomach was almost as painful as a sick one. He got up from his bed, his blanket draped over him like a cape. He dragged it into the section of the hideout that served kitchen along with himself. Let's see, what's on the menu for breakfast? He said, peeking in the books and crannies. Not much of a variety for breakfast. Because the lost boys ate it all! <laughs> Peter laid his hand on his belly as his stomach growled loudly for food. I hear you, I hear you. Both of us are hungry, he said, trying to calm down his empty abdomen. The boy wound up fixing a meal that would make even the most strong stomach men get sick. To others, it was a rather disgusting mix, but to Peter, it was perfect. What do you expect? He's having a baby. <laughs> At two months pregnant, Peter was starting to experience the normal symptoms of pregnancy, from the nausea to the cravings, moodiness, and frequent bathroom visits. But his friends haven't noticed anything different about him. As he sat there eating his food, a thought came to him. He had to tell his friends about the tiny baby inside him, but the Lost Boys were a little too rough to be helping much with his baby. They would unintentionally hurt it for all I know, he thought, swallowing down some of his water. But I can't wait. Tink will be on my case big time if I waited until the baby's bigger. He felt tiny bubbles in his stomach. They weren't the baby's tiny feet, but his stomach starting to work on his breakfast. He gave his belly a small rub. You're getting your fill too, aren't you, little one? He smiled. It'd be another couple of months before Peter would feel the baby's movements inside him. Peter finished his odd breakfast and leaned back in his chair, leaning it back on its back legs. He rocked back and forth, almost rocking himself and the baby. He was in a deep thought of how to approach the fact that he was pregnant to his friends. Maybe I should just come out and say it or lead up to it. He said, but then what would they think? I mean, something like this is kind of weird. As Peter continued to think, the chair he was in started to tilt back a little further than what he had intended, causing him to lose his balance and fall backwards. So thankful I'm only two months along. He slowly got up and fixed the chair. Ow, that hurt a little, he said, rubbing himself. He looked at a mirror that hung on the wall. He lifted up his shirt slightly. His belly was slightly bloated thanks to his breakfast, but the baby was still too small to be noticeable. Though there's no external evidence of the pregnancy, Peter could feel in his heart and mind that there was a tiny life inside him. I'd be the last person I'd expect to be a parent. But this had to happen for a reason. That you happen for a reason. He gave his belly a small rub. I almost feel like I need you in my life. Peter's mind was pretty much just on his sweet little treasure tucked away inside him. When he was tackled going back to his room, 
He felt six bodies he recognized as the boys play fighting him, which was the last thing he wanted. Suddenly he felt a blow to his stomach. Stop! You're gonna kill it! That got the boys off and Peter bolted to the safety of his room. Kill what? What's he talking about? The twins asked. Tinkerbell stared after Peter's retreating form before following after him. Wow, the Lost Boys punched Peter in the stomach and he's pregnant? Remember that time he my blue Calvin in the stomach while he was pregnant? <sighs> I didn't like that. And you didn't blow anything. Sam launched you towards me head first. I didn't know what she meant when she said use your head. <laughs> now, let's read the next part. Chapter 6. Peter looked at his belly in the mirror in his room. A large bruise had already formed. He rubbed his belly, trying to assure himself that his baby was fine. You okay in there, baby? He said, surprisingly, Peter's unborn baby was fine, despite the unintended attack from the boys. The tiny baby was safe and sound inside its mother, much to Peter's relief. But then he felt something odd. His baby was trembling as if very frightened. A small tear fell down Peter's cheek. He lay down on his bed, laying on his belly and hugging his pillow. The rear tear was soon followed by more. It's okay, baby. I gotcha. He said his hand slid under his belly, right where his baby was growing, almost cradling the tiny creature under his skin. I gotcha, he said again. Peter continued to cry well into the night, hardly moving any parts of his body. His hand still where his baby was peacefully sleeping. Peter's crying started to seize as he grew tired. He slowly got up, making a quick trip to the bathroom before returning to, into the same position. It was around midnight when Peter finally fell asleep, his eyes heavy from crying. He made a few tiny sounds before falling into a deep sleep, all the while unaware that Tinkerbell and the Lost Boys were outside his door and heard every single word. Uh-oh! Peter woke up the next morning to find the hideout oddly quiet. He left his room and saw the Lost Boys and Tink all looking at him. What? Peter asked, slightly uncomfortable with all the eyes on him. Peter, is it true that you're having a baby? Peter's eyes widened at the question before his hand went to his belly. Yeah, it's true. I am having a baby. Toodles looked up at Peter before scaling up the other boys' back and, and hugging his neck. It didn't take long for the others to hug him, too. Don't worry, Peter. We won't let you go through this alone, Nib said. Yeah, if it were any of us, we know you'd stick by us no matter what. Peter's eyes started watering and he soon began crying happily. Thank you guys are the best. Huh. Awesome. Chapter 7, two months later. Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> it seems so real now. The first trimester, nothing really happened. Just invisible changes that are going on inside Peter, stuff he couldn't see. But by the end of this month, his third month, the change that he'd been waiting for ever since his pregnancy began never happened. His belly was still as thin as it can get, but it was also slightly firmer and slightly sensitive now. Is this normal? After having revealed that he was having a baby, every healer in Neverland was doing monthly checkups to ensure that both Peter and his unborn baby were healthy. When he first heard his baby's heartbeat, he fell in love with it. He sat on the ledge by the window, merely staring at the sky while daydreaming. Wait, what was that? It felt like bubbles, little flutters. Was that his stomach? No, he hadn't eaten yet. Wait, isn't it during the fourth month that the baby starts kicking? His hand snaked onto his belly. It is. It's kicking, he thought. His imagination soared at that moment, picturing the tiny creature inside him using its tiny feet or hands to tell him that it's alive and real. He always wondered what about his unborn child, like any new mother to be. He wondered what its world is like. It hardly has to do a thing. Just sleep and grow while he eats for it, breathes for it, walks for it, goes to the bathroom for it, protects it loves it, keeps it safe. He 
also heard that by now his baby is able to hear stuff just slightly. He heard that it's able to hear its food digesting in his stomach. It can hear the air entering and existing his lungs. It can even hear the internal lullaby of his heartbeat. He bet that it sounded so cool to it. His unborn child gets to hear the lullaby sounds of his body, while he got to hear the boys bickering over who got to hold the baby first. Ah! He, he bet the baby's nuzzled up against the fleshy walls of its home, possibly listening to his stomach as it growls for food. Peter smiled, feeling even more kicks from his unborn child. He guess it's really active in there. Well, it's got plenty of room to move around, jump around, and have plenty of fun. That's his home for now. He's literally a moving home for it. He wondered if an unborn baby can sense when their mother is happy, scared, mad, and other emotions. Because for him, his baby couldn't just sense his emotions. He could feel the emotions of his growing child. Whenever there was a storm outside, the loud thunder would startle Peter's unborn baby. He could almost feel it trying to get away from the scary sound, though it couldn't really go anywhere. He knew it was scared, but the only thing he could do was rub his belly and try to calm it down. He didn't want to pick anything for the baby until he knew its gender, which he would know in at least one more month. Soon we're going to find out that if you're a boy or a girl, then it'll be much easier to pick a name for you. That sound okay with you? The baby lightly kicked in agreement, earning a fond chuckle. Yeah, I knew you would. <laughs> but, um, that the baby can hear his voice, too? Not yet, Charles Wallace. It's, it's, it's not supposed to hear the voice until, like, like the next month or so. But if, if it kicked an agreement, if it was probably just a light kick, Charles Wallace. Yeah, you're right, you're right. All right, let's continue.